Hi, good day everyone. So for this lecture, we're going to be tackling on how to develop a research proposal. So this initiative actually, this initiative, this initiative is actually responsive to the adjustment of the curriculum based on the quarantine measures. So ultimately, um, despite having, despite having the momentum and the development of the group researches that I'm currently working on. The other classes that I have are therefore compelled to pursue individual researches because ultimately they can't really pursue group researches given the quarantine measures because otherwise they would have to break the quarantine or they would have to make necessary compromises for the quarantine for, for the quarantine itself and therefore neglecting the idea of social distancing. So for this day, we're going to make a uh, we're going to make a quick review on how to develop. A research proposal since basically uh, basically you already you already know how to write the research itself but I think it's important that actually to remind ourselves why we need to pursue research why we need to somehow give an initial detail give an initial, uh, give an initial breakdown in terms of the concepts that you plan to explore in the longevity of the research itself so for starters, we're going to basically use a two-step process on how to decide on which research topic you'd like to pursue on. So the two-step two process is actually is actually very simple. First things first, or essentially the first step, you deter, you need to determine first a certain topic of interest or essentially a general field in which you plan to in which you plan to derive your study from. Let's say for example. Um, from the vastness of the knowledge systems uh, that are already provided in various disciplines, like for example in journalism, English, literature, sciences, technology, mathematics, etc., etc., social services, politics, governance, etc., etc., those are what we render as the general field of discipline. So initially, we need first to identify which among these which among these general disciplines or general fields do we want to derive our study from and of course after selecting such we go to step 2 or the second step which uh, which actually suggests that we narrow the issue down to a certain specific point uh, to a certain specific point in which we want to conduct a focus let's say for example if you were to select if you were to select a very general topic of interest such as such as let's say for example writing what aspect of writing do you do you intend to explore should it be in creative writing should it be in journalistic writing should it be in technical writing should it be in academic writing there are a lot of various focuses that are already provided in certain general fields so therefore our aim is to narrow those general ideas down to the gutter based on what your interpretation based on what your interpretation of the study may be so basically you just have to narrow it down so later on I will, uh, later on I will provide you with some samples as to how a research topic is often is often selected in the first place so ultimately I wanted to take note that the focus of the study is not necessarily just the focus itself for the sake of accomplishing it rather at the process of selecting a focus of the study or in the process of narrowing down the specific takes or your specific research take in that and in the general topic of interest in the process of it you can either derive your research title from it or essentially make it your research title per se so it's actually that is uh, it's actually that is a uh, easy it all comes from how we desire, how we decide in the first place what to pursue, what we want to pursue, and what we can pursue, given our current academic maturities, and of course, most importantly, given our interests. So, that being said, 
the title structure is actually pretty simple. As I've said earlier, you you have the option to derive the title or the research title from the focus of the study. But ultimately, we have two ways of writing the research title. That is usually based on the topic of interest and the focus of the study. So in this part, I'm going to show you um, certain formats in terms of how you write the research title. So one of the most often, uh, most often, uh, most often practiced formats of writing the research title lies on the two-part title. The two-part title consisting of the following. First things first, you provide the general statement, then colon, you narrow it down to the specific statement. Let's like say, for example, um, you plan to pursue, you plan to pursue the general statement of. Journalism as practice in the 21st century. That can be a general statement. Then the specific in, uh, the specific statement that can come in that is quality of the quality of uh, whether you want to assess the quality of outputs, you want to assess the content, you want to assess the number of readers, you want to assess um, you want to assess the number of those who actually practice the discipline of journalism in general. So that's all on you. So. The two-part title basically utilizes the idea of the general statement and, of course, the specific statement. Now, you have another option to write the research title. You could actually write a one-line title in which it only consists of a single line instead of the two-part wherein it is separated by the colon. In, th in the one-line title, you're only going to provide a single line and it will already serve as an effective research title. So, the one-line title needs to contain the following. First things first is the research type. What type of research, or essentially what type of qualitative research, what type of quantitative research do you plan to pursue? Let's say, for example, is this, a, is this an experimental analysis? Is this a phenomenological analysis? Is this a feasibility study? Is this a, a case study? Is this an action research? Depends on you. But ultimately, in writing the one-line title, you first need to put the research type. Then after doing so, after doing so, we go to the focus of the study. You actually combine them and write them into a conducive title. Say for example, a uh, research type, a phenomenological analysis of students reading comprehension. Maybe you could maybe you could write that as it is, or essentially it could already serve as your initial research title should you pursue a should you pursue a topic of interest that underlies the idea of reading the culture of uh, re culture of reading education curriculum in general depends on you so again we have two options first we can use a two-part title or you also have the option to use the less sophisticated format for the title which is of course the one-line title now after doing so, after writing the research title, of course, we need to write the research objective. So first things first, we need to answer the question, why do we need to write the research objectives in the first place? Because simply put, the research objectives makes use of organizing, uh, of organizing and collecting our thoughts, the plans that we have in pursuing the research, the plans that we have when conducting the analysis, or essentially the discussion and elaboration of the title itself. So, based on this definition that I've already provided, it is essentially an assurance or a guarantee to quality. It guarantees the quality of the research as well as guarantees the research pursuit will not stray from irrelevant discussions. So, ultimately, we look at the research objectives as simply our guide the guiding principles that we have in order for us to not get distracted and therefore in the process of it not necessarily include um, insignificant topics that may come in the way of your research conduct. So, that being said, in writing the objectives, we follow a simple idea on the SMART principles. We, follow, we, we primarily follow the SMART principles when writing the research objectives. Of course, the right... The SMART principles are as follows. S stands for being specific. M starts, uh, stands for being measurable. A stands for being attainable. Then, of course, R stands for being relevant. And lastly, T stands for being time-bound. Now, let's go to the very particulars of each 
uh, of each letter. So, for letter S, or essentially the specific objectives, one tip that I could give you when writing the objectives is always use process-based verbs. What do I mean by that? When using process-based verbs, we use words or activities or essentially the verbs that we plan to uh, that we plan to take into action when conducting the research. Okay, for example, do you plan to per uh, do you eventually want to propose something? Do you want to conduct something? Do you want to analyze? Do you want to evaluate? Do you want to categorize? Depends on you. But ultimately, we need to use not just verbs. We need to use relevant and process-based verbs that are proven to exhibit themselves in the entirety of your research activity. So that's for the research uh, that's for the specific objectives. Now let's go to the measurable objectives. In assuring measurability, of course, ultimately we need to provide um, basis. We need to provide quantifiable or either qual uh, quantifiable basis at the very least, or if you're not really pursuing quantitative research, we need to provide relevant evidence to prove our claims. So these evidences can come in the form of actual narratives coming from actual people. Actual narratives coming from your informants, you can do that also. Actual narratives coming from certain experts. Actual narratives coming, fr coming from those who experience social phenomenon that by some point you happen to be currently studying on. So, that's one thing to do when assuring the measurability of our objectives. We always need to provide a certain basis as to how the research would manifest itself as effective or in the long run, how would it uh, how would it be beneficial for other people what are the certain evidences that might prove the integrity of the research that we're trying to conduct so it's one thing now let's go to the attainable objectives so in the attainable objectives we make sure that the objectives are realistic of course let's say for example for high school students we need to get we need to garner this humility in order for us to in order, in order for us to avoid being too ambitious when, right, when conducting the research, when conducting the research project, I'm not saying that ambition is actually unhealthy, but I'm saying that in accordance to your academic maturity, in accordance to your realizable research skills, and based on your self-assessment, you need to be able to tell whether you're able to pull the research standards off, given your condition, given your youth given your educational attainments, given your experience in conducting the research, and other matters. So, ultimately, we need to make sure that the research process itself, or essentially the research plan or the proposal that we plan to develop, is actually attainable by people within our caliber. Or, most importantly, it needs to be attainable and it needs to be practiced or can be practiced by the likes of the natures of the researcher. So, we need to always consider that. And as researchers, it's actually part of our job to point out our major weaknesses. Because as far as I'm concerned, we are, we are actually better off uh, we are actually better off admitting our weaknesses than actually than actually affirming certain skills that in the first place, that in the first place we do not really have. So for one thing, we need to make sure that our objectives are within the caliber of our current skill set. That's one thing. So, aside from that, aside from being attainable, we also need to make sure that the objectives are indeed relevant. And the relevance can be proven if the objectives are tied directly to the research title. That's one way to tell that the objectives are properly and effectively written. Why? Because the relevance of the objectives is actually the assurance that the researcher who is actually proposing the research is not going to delve further into other insignificant topics. Rather, he would maximize the specific matters that are limited to the focus of the study which he or she may have chosen in the first place when deciding on the research topic. So, we need to make sure that our objectives remain relevant to the title that we are currently pursuing or essentially we have already written. Then lastly, we need to also indicate the time frame, essentially following the principle of being time bound. The time bound objectives actually uh, actually dictates us to 
continuously provide a certain time frame, a certain period of time wherein we plan to conduct the research process. So the research process ultimately could begin the moment that you actually propose the research. So in that certain period, how long do you actually wish to take the research? Ay, how long do you actually plan to conduct the research? Should it be in a span of two weeks? Should it be a span of a month? Multiple, uh, two months, three months, uh, th three months, four months? Depends on you. Depends on your availability and of course depends on the sense of urgency that the research is needed. So we need to include the time frame when writing our research objectives so that we would be able to follow a certain discipline and ultimately in the long run we could actually learn how to manage the time and of course how to manage the activities that com that comes in the conduct of our research when would be the time for you to conduct the interview to certain informants or respondents when would be the perfect uh, when would be the perfect time for you to write your literature review when would be when would be the perfect time for you to actually finish the research proposal in due time so you also need to consider the idea of being time bound you need to indicate the time frame wherein you plan to write the research so here are some example here's an example of certain titles going to going to these going to the research objectives themselves so my sample title here is a phenomenological study on, on the physiological, mental, behavioral, and social effects of smoking in young adolescents. So, as you would already notice, this is actually, this is actually a one-line title, a one-line or a single-line title consisting of the following. Number one, the type, of, the type of research. So, it is already evident that the type of research indicated here is, of course, a phenomenological study. Now, after doing so, we go to we go to the we go to the focus. So my focus here is of course the physiological, mental, behavioral and social effects of smoking. So let's say let's say that smoking is the general topic of interest that I actually want to pursue. So the focus that I want to delve deeper on are the following aspects that I've already mentioned, the physiological, mental, behavioral, social effects of smoking to the young adolescents. So that's one thing. Now, after the sample title, I'll give you a sample of the objectives. So of course, here is the very simple format on how to write the objectives. So, I begin by writing the time-bound, uh, by writing the time-bound principle, which is of course, after the end of the two-week period, the researcher will be able to. So, given the time frame, it, I only need two weeks to conduct the research proposal. So in two weeks' time, I will be able to do the following. At maximum, we could write three to five research objectives. But advisably, for beginning researchers such as yourselves, need to pursue at least three, at least three research objectives. Now let's go to by item. Now let's go to the objectives by item. So first objective is categorize the effects of smoking in terms of physiological, mental, behavioral, and social aspects. Let's take note of the first word, categorize. Categorize for letter A. Now let's go to letter B. Interview self-proclaimed smokers and health experts. So the second word, therefore, in letter B is interview. Now letter C, propose steps to deviate from smoking. So therefore, in number three, the, the verb or the word there is propose. So, what we could notice is that in, the, in, the, in these three words, categorize, interview, and propose, these are actually verbs. And not only are they, uh, not only are they verbs, they are also the process-based verbs. These are the verbs that most probably you will take and will act upon in the research activity. So, given that premise, the very limits of my research will only be I uh, will only tackle on the following objectives. Simply put, I would only categorize the physiological, mental, behavioral, and social effects. That's one thing. I would only interview self-proclaimed smokers and health experts. That's my methodology. And of course, at the very output of my research, I would propose steps to deviate from smoking. So as simple as that, I already I already wrote a title, and of course. They already provided project. Uh, they already provided objectives. So 
once we actually finish writing the objectives and writing the title, only then can we be assured that we are at a very smooth pace in beginning the research conduct itself. So, with that being said, I'd like to end this lecture by I'd like to end this lecture by actually mentioning certain contributors that actually have supported me throughout the long run. I'd like to I'd like to give a shout out to Bryant Van Austin Papa. This he is actually a former student of mine who actually volunteered to actually volunteered to me uh, to give his songs or to provide his musical pieces for my intro and outro. So I am deeply in depth to him. So thank you very much and of course please subscribe to his channel yeah, please subscribe to his YouTube channel called Sanitarium with the heart icon. It's pretty hard to find, which I think I'd like to ask that the YouTuber to somehow make a consideration for his channel to be easily found by most of the viewers. So ultimately, um, I also like to plug in my Facebook I, I also like to plug in my Facebook page, which is of course the Street Academic. You could actually find that in the link already provided here. So ultimately if you found this video actually helpful for you, I'd like to suggest that you actually send whoopsie, I'm so sorry about that. I'd like to suggest that you actually send this to those you think you uh, to those you think might need them. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching this video and of course stay safe and sense.